Tonight is November the 15th, 2021, and I've got something tonight that um, I think is just absolutely amazing and wonderful and just great. Let me tell you, years ago, you know, everything nowadays, it seems like everything's going to be before and after the pandemic. Well, this was a few years before the pandemic. <clears throat> I bought these little LED light bars, and I actually put this thing together soldered all of those connections on there and everything. I won't impress you with that. I don't recommend it. Buy one put together. But anyway, what I wanted it for ultimately is two things. I wanted a, a peak reading audio watt meter, which it will do a good job at. And even more so, I kind of wanted a, uh, an expanded scale uh, watt meter for ham radio for RF watt meter. Well, this thing works great for both. But here's the, here's the interesting thing about it. When I bought it and I built it and I could put audio into it and see it work and everything, I was like, okay, this is really cool. It works. Let me show you some audio into it. I think I've got this thing hooked up. I don't want to belabor this. Yeah, see there? That, that's one kilohertz coming out. So you, it goes up and then, and then up here it turns red. If I drive it a little bit harder. Let's see if I can drive it a little bit harder. Nah, I don't know if I can. Not. Yeah, I think I can like that. And then it'll go up there into the red, okay? Okay, so it's got those three colors. Well, <clears throat> the thing about it is that stopped me from using this thing was it didn't measure DC. It only measured AC. And that was a showstopper big time. Because when you want to measure power, you need to rectify the AC and turn it into a DC value. Okay, so I just said, well, whatever, and I put it in a plastic bag and put it away. Well, tonight, I guess because I needed something to do, I drug this thing out and started tinkering with it again. I guess I was just doing something wrong all those years ago. This thing measures DC perfectly. Look at there. There's a battery. Can you see my battery in the... Well, that right there is a total game changer. Because, Wow. Well, you just rectify it, and power is E square over R. There's 60 segments, so if you want this thing to measure from 0 to 8 watts or whatever, you divide the 8 watts into, into 60 segments. You know what the voltage is. E equals square root of WR, power squared times resistance, E square over R, whatever it is. I, I'm not trying to give you any Ohm's Law formulas here. You can figure all that out. I, I, don't, want to get, I don't want to get testy here. But anyway, you got 60 segments, so you got a lot of resolution in here. Now, I've had a, an RF a peak reading watt meter that I built in 1983. 1983 is going to be 49 year, uh, 39 years ago here real soon. And I've used it ever since. I use it daily. It works. What is, what is so cool about these types of... Uh, uh, LED type watt meters, there's three things. One is they're real pretty. You'll like it. Uh, two is that um, you could measure both the average power. There's no such thing as RMS power, so I'm not going to go there. You can measure the average power and you can measure the peak power. You can see it very clearly. Uh, another thing is is that um, it's, the, it's the good and the bad, but it's actually the good more so in my opinion is that this does not discriminate between forward power and reflected power so if your SWR is low then it's pretty accurate you calibrate it against a dummy load of course and you uh, if your SWR is uh, low it's it's accurate enough and if something happens like your antenna you know if uh, a hurricane blows it down and you're not aware of it then the output will be the sum of your forward and reflected power. So if you're normally used to it, you know, bouncing up, say, halfway, three quarters away, whatever you calibrate it for, and then, and then when you get on, boom, and everything is lit up, you go, whoa, something's wrong here, because all of your power's been reflected and it's going off the scale. So that's actually a good thing. The fact that it cannot discriminate between forward and reflected power. Well, anyway, it has to be able to do DC. And it can do DC, and it is polarity sensitive. You put the battery on backwards, it does nothing. Okay, and to put DC in from either audio or RF is just too easy. It takes some voltage divider resistors and a diode, 
and a couple of small capacitors like 0.1 microfarads, 0 0.001, whatever for RF. Okay, now that I've really pumped this thing, I want to take it to the basement and I'm not going to do any uh, audio measurements with it because they're all going to be the same. The idea behind it, whether audio or RF, audio frequencies or radio frequencies, it's all the same. So suppose I want this thing to measure 2,000 watts full scale. So you've got 60 segments in here and you have to do the voltage in this anyway. I did it all with an Excel spreadsheet. I'm sorry I can't uh, share the Excel spreadsheet with you and uh, it would be too much. You know, I'm not going to try to tell you exactly what each segment is for 8 watts or 10 watts or 2,000 watts or whatever. You got to figure all that out on your own. But here's the point. LED watt meters are just absolutely fantastic. It lets you know what your average power is when you load up and you put a carrier out while you're loading up. It lets you know what your peak power is, your PEP power. Uh, it does all those things I just mentioned. I'm going to let's take it to the basement and I'll hook it up to something I've already built, the one that I'm talking about about in 1983. And I'll show you how easy it is to make this thing work. You will like it. Okay, well here it is set up in a test mode. I'm obviously going to put this in a, in a nice cabinet with some, uh, some other controls where I can measure different power levels. But uh, really, I'm not trying to pump what I did here, but in 1983, uh, I've shown this before, I, uh, I got a, a circuit posted for this watt meter right here. I think that's in the view of the camera. This little uh, peak reading watt meter right here. It's not hooked up right now because I'm using its detector. But I've been using this since 1983. It's just, you know, it's made out of discrete components. Uh, 2 and 2222 22 transistors. I'll scope in on it just a little bit. Okay, so you can you can find these articles how they work, and and the detector is uh, down here at the bottom. Very very simple. There's a drawing error right there that should not be grounded. You can uh, that that wire should be eliminated. That that's a drawing error. And also it was uh, you can find it uh, the same article in. Uh, and this one right here, Radio Electronics, published in Australia, Holland, New Zealand, North America, whatever, with the, um, it's got the same article in it with a corrected uh, schematic. Now, what you do have to do, before I show you how it works, is you do have to write yourself a bit of an Excel program, and I, this is a 60 segment one. So I've got down here segment one, which would be the one at the bottom. It's in it's in um, six groups of ten. It's got ten segments in to six units. So the first one would be up to 55 watts. The second one would be up to 222. The third would be exactly 530. Uh, 40 would be uh, 888 watts. 50 would be 1388 watts and 60 would be exactly 2,000 because that's what I used. 2,000 divided into 60 power uh, uh, segments here. You have to, you make sure that, you, you've got to do your own Ohm's Law stuff and everything. I, I'm not going to try to get into that detail. If you can, uh, if you can build this, you can, you can figure this out. Okay, so that's the way you calibrate it. Calibrated against a known watt meter or whatever. Well, I've got it hooked up to uh, right now. I've got it uh, attached to this uh, little ICOM right here. ICOM IC 736. I use it to drive this beauty down here of my 833 amplifier, which um, will do a thousand average watts just in the blink of an eye. And uh, then we'll measure its. Uh, Average and PEP output here, right there. Now, it, I don't, I don't have this thing built in. I'm not trying to show you a finished product. I'm just trying to give you an idea that 
a little blinking LED watt meter is really darn nice and it doesn't cost much money you, you can buy this thing you can build the detector okay Hello, testing one, two, three, four, five, four, three, two, one. This is WA4 QGA testing. See, it's actually going up here, all the green and yellow, and blinking up into the red. So it's blinking all the way up. This is the 50 segment mark. So it's blinking up to about 55 segments, 56, 57, depending on my voice. Um, this top one, see how, see how it goes down? When I quit talking, and when I'm talking, We'll, we'll, we'll say that it's up at 54, 55, 50, 51, 3, that's 53, 54, 56, okay? And if we look that up here, and of course you'd on, uh, say segment 56 says it's 1,742 watts, segment 55 says it's 1,680. 1,680 is just about what it always peaks up to on the one that I built. And it all makes sense and it's all true. So, I mean, technically that's a little bit over the limit, right? But anyway, so I, I actually never talk with it over a, a segment 51, of course, into an antenna. <laughs> right? Never. That'd be 1445. But anyway, you see my point. And you can calibrate it for 200 watts full scale or 100 watts full scale or whatever. It takes about a half a volt to drive it full scale. So you got to figure that in whatever your voltage divider resistors are and you could get some wild numbers like 22k is what I'm using here I'm taking a 22,000 ohm 2 watt resistor right off of the uh, right off of the line from a T connector and if you think that that's kind of weird it's not weird at all because this this little uh, Heathkit uh, HO10 I think they use a I think they use a 20 or 22k resistor 1 watt Directly off the line, directly off of the, uh, tapped off of the, uh, the center conductor of the, um, of the coax. It's supposed to be good up to a kilowatt of AM. I'm not sure I'd want to put a full kilowatt of AM on there, but it works. And I'll switch over to another rig here and I'll show you. Let's see, oh, dummy load, let's go over to the AM rig. And, um, just showing you, you know, you can use the same scale for different power levels. There's AM. You can hear me talking. It's all into a dummy load. If you could see the bird watt meter, which I don't think you can, it's 300 watts. And if, when I'm not talking, it's that segment, uh, darn, it's kind of hard to see. It's that segment, um, wow. Sorry, I, I want to I be accurate here. I need a, a light here. That's a segment um, 10, 20. I see 20s right there. That's about segment 23, something like that. And segment 23 is um, 293 watts. See that? 293.9 watts. Now, if you're looking for something down to the 0.1 watt level, don't bother because that's not what this is about. And here's AM right there modulating up. And we know that uh, fully modulated AM, plate modulated uh, AM, this thing is uh, bumping up to, uh, let's see, that's uh, 40, that's the 50, that's as high as about 54. That's 55 right there. So it bumps up as high as 55. And 55 says, um, no, that's not right. I'm reading it wrong. Let's see, that's 40, 50. Can't be going that high. Okay, 10, 20, 30, 40. That'd be 60 at the tops. Uh, 60, 50. No, that'd be 50 at the top of this one. So it's 40, yeah, it's 44 to 45, sorry. And 44 to 45 says it's about 1,075 watts. If the camera will focus, which is correct, because full, fully modulated uh, AM 
uh, is four times the carrier. The carrier is, 12, is 300 watts, so four times that would be 1,200 watts. So it should be peaking up around there, around 44, 45. It works. It's accurate. It's accurate enough. And like I say, it, I'm not going to show you this. I'm not going to disconnect my antenna. But if, if you lose your antenna, if you lose the load or your SWR goes really high, then this thing's going to go off the scale. Besides that, it's really pretty, isn't it? Now, I know that's stereo and they're wired parallel, but that's okay. Shows you what your uh, reasonably accurate uh, uh, PEP power is. Got to have one of these. Um, I find them really valuable. There, there's some nice ones out there. There's one made by Ellie Craft. That's about two hundred fifty, three hundred dollars, which is nice, and it, um, it, it has reflected power. There's one made by Palomar that was made a lot of years ago, back in the '80s, uh, that shows forward and reflected power. But uh, this one doesn't do all that because I'm talking right into the microphone again. But isn't that cool? I wouldn't leave home without it. So I hope this helps you guys. Uh, it, <clears throat> it's a fairly easy project. And I think once you get it and start using it and, uh, and get comfortable with it and, and feel, I'm talking to the microphone again, and, and feel confident with it again, I think you'll, uh, you'll never want to be without it. Thanks for watching. Stay safe. Thanks for watching. And uh, until next time. Okay, I haven't even turned anything off yet. I just can't get enough of this uh, AM transmitter. I'm, I'm really quite charmed with it. There's the big mercury vapor rectifiers at the bottom. I know I've shown this a few times. The modulators. I wish the camera didn't overwhelm so easily because they're just a very nice soft uh, orange color. There it is, 300 uh, milliamps. There's our grid drive, 60 milliamps. 60 milliamps of grid current. 300 milliamps of uh, plate current, 1250 volts, and the little uh, Collins 310B up at the top is a lot of fun. I'm having uh, a lot of good experiences of, on AM on 40 and 20 meters. For some reason, when I call uh, CQ on uh, 40 meters, it's kind of hard to get a contact for some odd reason. I don't know why, but uh, if I do talk to somebody that's been on, and their QSO is over there. All I meet is uh, really fine ladies and gentlemen out there. So uh, just can't get enough of it. I'm also I'm going to mention one other thing here. I'm going to go work with a good friend here in El Paso on Tuesday. It's already Monday here, technically. And um, he's got three Collins 30S1s, and I think I'm going to uh, be the owner of one of them. I am very excited about that. To help him get one of them running and I'll get another one and the third one I believe is just for parts so uh, I really want that 30S1 because you know I obviously don't have enough amplifiers and equipment down here to make uh, any ham radio operator happy especially the vintage guys so I'm going to have to probably uh, maybe knock out the closet over here and put it in there <laughs> no, I'm just kidding but anyway, and here's the speech amplifier for that little thing. Uh, I was driving in with that Macintosh below just the other day, and I really didn't get any, uh, really didn't work as good as this one. Uh, this is built part for part, component for component correct, out of the uh, Collins KW1 transmitter, all the way down to the vintage 6B4Gs, as you can see them lit up. I actually, I got to tell you something personal about those 6B4Gs. I sent them. I sent these very tubes to my friend in Poland. And because of some confusions with FedEx, they sent them back. Back at, The boxes were never opened. They laid in Germany for a, a week or so in customs. Never, never was opened and examined. I imagine they were x-rayed or whatever. But anyway, these things have gone to Poland and back. And uh, there they are, that they're working. Some of these things have interesting uh, histories, don't they? <laughs>